<clears throat> hey YouTube. So, um, as you can see by some of the stuff that's like right there, I think I'm right in the camera spot. Not sure. Um, been a while since I've done a video, so kind of a little out of, uh, out of my rhythm, if you will. Um, but yeah, as you can see, uh, my room's a little bit of a mess, but, uh, I decided, uh, to screw it. And, uh, I was gonna just make a video cause, uh, nobody's here at the house and, uh, I wasn't quite doing anything else. I was just double checking on Raiden. Um, gotta love carpet pythons. Uh, if you pop on your Instagram, you'll see a tag doing something. Um, <clears throat> long story short, somebody got themselves stuck in something that they shouldn't have and I had to cut their way out of it. Um, and uh, I've been checking on him because that happened Wednesday night while I was handling him. He just decided he was going to get himself stuck. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was fun. Uh, so I had to have that little battle with him trying to get him out. He kept getting himself more stuck as he usually does. Um, also because, you know, he tried to go backwards and his scales started getting caught. I could hear them getting caught in what he got caught in. Um, so it was a nightmare. Don't climb up anything, but um, don't get attacked by Pophis. Your knee's right behind me. So, anyways, guys, uh, my last video, I think I was showing you that I had this cage ready to go. Um, but I don't think you saw the top cage. So, you can't put the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, I finished all my cages. Um, I think I did that at the, uh, the end of August, maybe, uh, beginning of September. I don't really remember anymore. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I finished that up, which is fantastic because, you know, that's something that was, uh, dragging on my mind. It was causing me some problems. Um, and of course the problems didn't stop there. Um, I kept having more and more issues with things. Um, you know, life of a reptile keeper, I suppose, is always going to be a problem somewhere, somehow. So, I mean, I guess my best advice as far as that goes, just be prepared for things to always go wrong. Have a backup. And make sure you know people. So in case something does go wrong and you need to talk to somebody who has experienced some sort of a problem, you can talk to them and figure out what you need to do. Like for example, if you have a spider robotics uh, thermostat and it just shuts down randomly one day, you might have had a problem with your fuse. So you're going to want to check that and you also want to make sure that you're not overloading your system with too much power because you can do that. I had a fuse blow because it might have just been a bad fuse and then I swapped it out with a new fuse and it blew again and then I swapped it out with a third fuse and I haven't had a problem yet and it was for these guys' cages. So they were without heat for like a couple of days I think. Um, I mean granted I live here in Florida guys so I mean the, the house you know didn't go any lower than like. 78 you know during the day so they had a, a moderate temperature but it wasn't ideal for them but it was moderate so it wasn't it wasn't too bad like they were they were okay for those days so that was good um, and if you couldn't tell hey buddy um, so if you couldn't tell, this is Raiden. He's my Brisbane Coastal Carpet Python. Um, I'll try to get him a little bit closer for you guys. Um, I can't really see what you guys are seeing, so I'm just gonna try to show him in the best way that I can. Um, but yeah, my Brisbane Coastal Carpet Python. Um, if you haven't noticed, he's gotten a fair bit bigger. Um, I figured out a way to get him to start eating rats because I was having a problem with getting him back on food. 
because we went off food for five, almost six months. Um, just no food. He was just on a food strike. I tried, I kept trying offering him stuff. He just wasn't interested. Um, I ended up switching his enclosure and I think I may have gotten him to eat when I had him in the four by two and a half instead of the four by three. And I think that's also because the, um, he was getting the heat more directly. So he couldn't, um, cause he, he liked to hang out on the bottom in his humid hide cause he loves to hang out in his humid hide. And I actually had to remove his humid hide because he was going in there so much. He actually ended up giving himself scale rock. Um, so he's cleared up from that because he shed two at the least, maybe about three to four times since he got the scale rot. Um, and uh, it's gone now, so that that's a good thing. Um, but, you know, he was being a pain in the butt, so I had to remove all his stuff out of his humid hide, but he still loves to hide in it. So um, I think he just likes the, the security of it. I don't think he necessarily cares for the humidity, but who knows? Um, and I also did learn not too long ago that apparently humidity is not something you really should care about with carpet pythons. And that um, the only time you should really concern yourself with humidity is for uh, shedding, which honestly, I think I would agree with um, because my observations have been that they really don't seem to have much of a problem if there's no humidity in the cage. Um, obviously they're going to have a problem if you put it up too high, but I've just noticed that they don't really have a problem with it. Um, the breeder that I got him from and my Bradley Python from said that his humidity is like 20 something because he's up in Washington and he never has had a problem with carpets. He's been keeping them for 18 almost 19 years he's been keeping carpet pythons and breeding them for as long as I've been dealing with just reptiles as a whole which is quite impressive um I mean just to work with one species for that long I think is, is quite quite cool um but anyways though uh that's just a random fun fact and uh I don't know if I mentioned it to you guys but um because this just came to my mind just a random thing. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Raiden's actually about six feet long now. Uh, he was nearing it for a while, and then he stopped eating, and then um, just it was just not going well, and I got him back onto food, um, which I guess I'll explain what I did. Um, I, I guess I could show you. So, a guy down in... Um, Australia uh, on Instagram he's zomatic zomatic reptiles or they are or whatever I think it's a whole group of people yeah Pophis is gonna try taking you out buddy so be careful um, so if you guys hear a random thud during this video uh, it's gonna be Pophis slamming his face against the acrylic because he sees Raiden and he wants to eat him um, anyways back to the thing at hand um, so I had told him, uh, a long time ago that I was having problems with, um, my, well, actually a couple of my snakes, my jungle carpet python and him getting them onto rats because they just don't want to eat rats, or at least right now they didn't. Um, and so what he told me was he was like, use jute twine. And I was like, what the heck is jute twine? And what are you talking about? And he was like, well, he's like, I'm going to post up a video later because I've been getting a lot of questions about this. I'll tag you in it and, you know, and we'll go from there. And I was like, okay, cool. So he posted up a video, tagged me in it, jute twine, you tie it around a mouse, tie it to a rat, feed it to the snake, they take it, boom, no problem. I was like, okay, that's cool. I didn't do it. I didn't do it for a while. I was like, I'm going to do it scenting or I'm going to do it by... Um, I can't remember the term that somebody had used for it. Um, chaser. So you do the chaser where you feed them like a mouse, and then afterwards you offer them the rat, and they take the rat. Well, 
I tried that, it worked for a bit, and then it stopped working with my jungle carpet python, and I was like, you gotta be kidding me, because it's just, you know, I mean, I, I mean, if you guys know Gotta Love Carpet Python, she's got a jungle carpet python is around like six, six plus feet, and she only eats mice, so she ends up eating like, I think somewhere around like 10 a meal. Um, I mean, and if you're going to consider, you know, my coastal carpet python, he's a Brisbane coastal carpet python on top of being a coastal carpet python, and your coastals average about seven to eight feet. Where well, your Brisbane's average eight to nine feet. And this is just the average. Of course, you could have a lot bigger ones. I mean, if you guys watch uh, One Soft Kiss, you know, she's got a carpet python that's anywhere from like nine to like 11 feet, something like that. He's, he's big. He's a big boy. Honestly, I hope that Raiden could get that big one day. Um, really wouldn't be dying to have him at 11 feet. I mean, I'd be perfectly okay with it and I'd handle it and wouldn't be a problem. Um, but, you know, I at least want a nine foot snake. So Raiden, keep it up. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm weird like that. Um, so anyways, back to what I was saying. I mean, I can only imagine, you know, a nine foot snake instead of a six foot snake having to feed him mice all the time I'd probably be feeding him like close to about 20 mice if not 20 jumbo mice um, that's quite a bit um, if you couldn't tell uh, so I was trying to find a way where I could get him to start eating rats and um, so I finally was like oh shoot what was that stuff and I tried locating the person on Instagram and I finally messaged and I was like, hey, um, do you have that, that video? Or I was like trying to figure out who it was. I was like, hey, um, were you the one that told me about the, uh, the trick with the, the tying it up with something, the, the mouse with something onto the rat? And the guy was like, yeah. And so he was like, here, let me just tag you in or, um, like repost it or something or like tag you in the comment or something. Tag me in the comment, I found it, I bookmarked the video, and then I started to use it. So that's why I grabbed this thing over here. This is a jute twine. So what jute twine is, is it's an organic string, uh, from my understanding. It's just made out of plant. So you tie it onto the mouse or the rat or whatever, or chick in my uh, jungle carpet python's case, sometimes he wanted chicks, not, not mice, um, which is fine because I have a bunch of them. Um, and, um, you just offer it to them. They take it, they, they can digest it. I have found it a couple times in the poo, but for the most part, when the temperatures were correct and everything, I, I haven't found it. But that was when I had my temperature dips, like I was mentioning. Um, that was the only time I ever found the jute twine in, in their stool. Um, so otherwise it was getting fully digested. Um, and I actually had to do that with my king snake. So if you guys didn't know, because I don't know if I mentioned it in my last video, my Brooks or Florida King Snake, not sure which it is, to be completely honest with you at this point, I really don't care. Um, uh, he got a respiratory infection because he was in that tub. I don't know if you can see it up there, but he was in that tub up there and there weren't enough holes in it. And he kept going in his water dish to soak and he kept flooding his water and it was getting inside his tub. And then it was increasing his humidity and it got way too high. And one day I looked at it and I'm like, why is it muddy in here? And then all of a sudden I saw a snot coming out of his nose and I'm like, great. So I had to deal with that with him. Well, he didn't want to eat for the longest time. He was eating large rats um, right before he got his, um, his respiratory infection. I could barely get him to eat medium rats right now because he's struggling with still getting back into um, getting his jaw open for it. So that's been kind of fun, um, but I have gotten him to eat quite a few medium rats. Um, even though he's being a picky son of a gun, um, he's he's getting back to it. So and he's completely healthy. He's cleared of his respiratory infection. Um, it was just an environmental thing. It wasn't like um, bacterial or anything like that. So that was that was nice. I did take him to my vet to have uh, my vet take a look at him. And I had my vet take a look at Raiden because of his, um, uh, 
his scale rot, and then I thought maybe he had a respiratory infection as well. Um, but it's also possible that the scale rot that um, Raiden had was actually a tub rub. If any of you guys are familiar with that. Um, it's just basically where like a snake is kind of getting a little irritated, if you will, or like um, kind of worked up about something. Like it could be breeding season, which could have been his problem. Um, and they just rub all over their cage, and I think he was rubbing all over and irritated his skin, got a little bit of rub, and then he was hanging out in his humid hide, and then he got scale rot from that. Um, but like I said, he's completely fine now, no longer on him, which is great. Because, um, I mean, that's just, I've had to deal with scale rot. This is the third time I've bumped into scale rot. One of the times, uh, it was a pophis, my Texas indigo snake, he ripped the scale um, on something that he used to have in his cage and um, that got moist and then got infected and it was just like a tiny little bit of scale rot and then um, the one my king snake got it just a little bit because his cage's humidity went through the roof um, and yeah so this is like the third time I've come across it and I should mention when I get scale rot usually it's about like a scale uh, Raiden however had like a couple of chunks like about this long on him you know like about three of them and it was on his like jaw and stuff um so he was uncomfortable so that's part of the reason why he stopped eating for so long um but otherwise um you know he's doing great now hopefully you can see that um he's being active as can be he's um you know he's starting to really really calm down um i know he was um he's He's been getting a lot better lately, but, um, you know, as of, uh, shoot, um, I want to say this past, uh, bit when he got back onto food, um, he's like really, really mellowed out, which has just been absolutely fantastic. So, um, so yeah, I just figured I'd, cause I had him out. I was like, Hey, you know what? Why don't I show him off a little bit for you guys? So you can see him and then I can give you an update on stuff that's been going on and give you a little heads up about something that I learned just in case if you're having trouble with a snake that doesn't want to switch over to something, um, try the jute twine. Um, I mean this thing cost me I think like four bucks on Amazon or something like that. Can't remember. Um, the bag of mice cost me, um, shoot, I don't remember how much that cost me, like maybe like 20, 30 bucks, something like that for like a big bag of jumbo mice. Um, and you know, and the fact that I've got them back onto rats, I mean, that's priceless. Um, so he's getting the rats into him, not in the way that I would like, but he's at least taking his food. Honestly, if I have to do this for the rest of his life to keep him on rats, so be it. Cause, um, I mean, whatever it takes, guys. Um, I mean, I just, I don't want to have to deal with feeding multiple mice because this snake doesn't even like eating multiple meals within the meal. Um, occasionally he will, but for the most part, he does not like it. My jungle carpet pythons also like that. He typically will only take like one, maybe two things and then he's done. He doesn't want to eat anymore. Um, so, and I have a few snakes that are like that. They generally do not like to eat more than one thing. They only like to eat their one thing and then they're done. It doesn't matter if it was enough to fill them. They only want that one thing because they will just, you know, sit there another, a day or two later being like, mm, I want some more food. It's like, I just offered you some. Like, mm, I want it now, you know, and uh, so then sometimes I got to work something out for them. But, you know, it is what it is. So, um... So yeah, I don't know if um, there's anything really left for me to give you updates on. I mean, my uh, Florida pine snake, which I can, I found out just recently, I can actually uh, refer to him as my Florida pine snake um, because he is captive bred and I got him from tech, uh, Tennessee, not Texas. Um, and uh, so legally I can keep him in Florida because he's captive bred from another state. I can't keep him if he was from this state, but captive bred from another state, I can do that. So that was nice news to hear as well. Um, so I have to thank my uh, reptile friend, my new reptile friend, who gave me that information. Um, so I don't know how long this video is. We're going to take a look-sees.
20 minutes. Wow, not too bad. Um, yeah, that's um, that Florida Pines uh, cage. As you can tell, the humidity is up quite high. Reason being because uh, his heat actually shut off. And um, so he uh, had, I guess, uh, there was a bunch of water on this side. And I got his heat going. And so, uh, yeah, his humidity shot up and his heat's actually quite high too. So I actually have it cracked to reduce it. That's actually like, I gotta say, I know this is just kind of a weird ramble and yeah, you get to see a lot of dirty stuff around. Sorry, I didn't clean up for the video. I just decided to wing it and you guys are gonna have to deal with, um, glare and what have you. Um, that's my Bradley Python. Um, probably in the next video I do, I'll probably take him out cause, um, He's freaking huge. But um, but anyways, my favorite thing about cages like this so far has been stuff like this. So you see how this is Raiden's cage, actually. So I'll actually put him back if you guys want to see. Um, so here he goes. This is, uh, for those of you who have uh, not seen any of my videos ever, um, which, I mean, I guess now I only have two, but, uh, I used to have a bunch more, um, these cages, the ones that, uh, Raiden, Sidorak, Apophis, and, uh, Aphrodite are in, that's my surname, Red Tail Boa, right there, um, they're all in six foot, so, six foot long, two and a half feet wide, and a foot and a half um, and that's actually the, um, let's see, internal dimensions. Um, the external dimensions are actually more or less like, uh, 19 inches tall. Um, think about 31 inches. No, that actually might be 30 inches wide. Or so two and a half feet. Um, and then it's about like 73 inches long. Um, so six feet, one inch. Um, so yeah, yeah, these are the, uh, the cages I built for them. As you can see, there's a bunch of glare in my room because that's just the way it works. Um, but you get the idea, um, you know, I got the PVC pipes, uh, there are certain cages like Aphrodite's where they get like a little platform like that. Um, but anyway, so my favorite thing about these, I know I keep jumping around from topic to topic. If you got a problem with that, I mean, you can tell me in the comments, but I'm just going to tell you what I t tell every single person it, that that's what I do. I have really bad ADHD. So I'm going to jump from topic to topic. So if you don't like that, you know, go somewhere else because it's, you're going to have to deal with that. But anyways, so if the heat's wrong on a cage, <clears throat> say for example, uh, Raiden's heat's fine, which it actually is, <clears throat> but Sidorak, because they actually share the uh, the same thermostat. Actually, all four of these cages do. That includes that top one up there. They have the same thermostat. Well, I'll show you. But it runs two different temperatures at the same time. So, um, what I have done is I have the two Morelia on this rack stack whatever you want to call it um they're on the same thermostat <clears throat> or the same side of the thermostat i mean so they get the same temperature but once again like i was about to say but i cut myself off so i could explain some more stuff because that's what i do um <clears throat> so if raiden's cage is the correct temperature i can crack it like this so that way if sidorax is wrong which sidorax is because it's actually running low i like I said, I crack Raiden's because Raiden has the heat probe. You can see that right there. He's got the heat probe. <clears throat> so I crack Raiden's cage. It'll increase the heat in this cage, but it also increases the heat in this cage. But I keep this one closed, so then the heat can increase in here, and it doesn't increase in here, technically speaking. Because I'll close that and the temperature is not really going to dip. And if I need to, I can always open up the cool side, let that let out some heat, 
and then Raiden's won't have a problem. So it's actually kind of a neat trick that I learned um, having the thermostats because obviously I'm not going to get a thermostat for each temperature gradient or even each um, you know individual animal just because, I mean, if they share the same temperature, personally, I don't see any reason why I would, you know, go through all that that trouble because to me it just it, it's kind of asinine um so and yeah that is a little owl my girlfriend got that for me for christmas long or my birthday um long story don't ask um i mean you can ask but i'm just not going to tell you about it now um oh shoot where was i this is a problem with me was i tend to get sidetracked um well i guess i'll go over um because we i've been showing raiden off so i guess i'll go over more stuff about him um so raiden is a just a little over three year old brisbane coastal carpet python um he is now at around six feet long, um, more, maybe less, I'm not quite sure. The last time I tried measuring him, um, I had his nose to the ground and his tail up at about my head, maybe a little bit above. So I would definitely say about six feet because I am actually six feet tall. Um, and if you didn't notice, the cages behind me are actually a little bit taller than me, and that's because... Because I made them uh, 18 inches tall on the inside, they're about 19 inches tall each, um, so that actually increased it, so it's actually uh, 6 feet 4 inches, so it actually makes me look like I'm shorter than 6 feet, but in reality this uh, cage system is actually 6 feet and 4 inches tall. Um, a little fun side note, but yeah, if you can see that, that's like a, I don't know what size shoe box if you want to call it a shoe box thing that is um but yeah six foot carpet python fit in there obviously he's not super thick right now i mean he's able to take large rats and you know there's not like too much of a bulge in him um and generally just so you guys know i feed him a large rat one week and then the next week i feed him a medium rat and i, I kind of alternate um i'm starting to get him closer to eating more of the larges I mean, especially since he just shed, so he grew just a little bit more. Um, his mostly his girth. Um, this shed, I don't really think he grew in length, but um, if he did, it was just like you know, like a little little bit. Um, but you know, his girth is really what got bigger because now I can like I put my hand around him, and um, I don't. Yeah, I can't. Like that's how big around my hand is. Like he's he's bigger around than that. Granted, that doesn't really give you much of a. A measurement but you know um you know like i can't really fit my hand around him all the way at his thickest point now um so that's how much bigger he's gotten um so not not too much bigger because he was about five feet last year i'm um, about this time um and he's only about six feet now um so not that big of a jump for him but, um, I mean, he is, he did go on like a six month feeding strike. So all that considered, he grew about a foot in a year, which is pretty good, um, with a six month feeding strike. So that's not so bad. Um, the one that is impressive is this guy right up here. My Bradley, as I was mentioning before, um, he was like four and a half feet I want to say by the time he turned two he's the same age as Raiden um and he is at the very least six feet long now if not more so he he's rather impressive um which is weird because Bradley's um typically don't get bigger than Coastal's I mean they get about the size of them um but not really bigger so because they generally average around six to eight feet is what I've been reading um, with the occasional nine plus foot one. Um, and when I say nine foot plus, I mean like about three meters, which I believe is 
uh, nine feet, nine inches. So like, that's like the largest that I've heard of for a Bradley. Um, whereas like your coastals, I think the largest ever recorded was 13 feet and seven inch or nine inches actually. Yeah. I think it's about 13, 13, nine. Um, it's about the biggest, uh, coastal that was ever recorded. And that was actually a Brisbane. Um, but yeah, so that's Sidorak. You can't really see his colors in here, um, but, you know, he is beautiful, let me tell you that. So, all right, I'm going to sign off for today. I think I've uh, yammered on enough for you guys. Just random stuff, random update, as per usual. It's the way I do my videos, and uh, yeah, if you don't mind, if you like the hair, this is called Bedhead. Um, like I said, I just decided to do a video and I was like, well, I mean, there's no reason to try to make myself look pretty because, um, there was no hope uh, because, uh, I had Raiden out and he's a nightmare to try to get things done with. So, um, anyways, if you like the video, you know, leave a like, leave a comment, any of that stuff. This is just an update just to show you guys what's been going on. Um, I don't know when the next time I'm going to give you guys an update. Uh, but as of right now, this is what's going on. So I've got 12 cages all built. Um, everybody should be fine for the next few years. Um, then I'm probably going to have to start doing some more upgrades. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, anyways, I appreciate you guys watching this. And uh, I hope you all have a good one. And uh, be good to each other. Okay.